Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. This is Josh Michaelis with Kane Stream Media, and you are watching On the Road. Uh, I wanted to give a quick explanation for the non-hound hunting folks out there. Uh, what are we doing here? Um, we are headed down to Lexington, Tennessee, to the youth four-wheeler hunt. It's called the uh, Youth Handler Showdown, I believe. And these kids uh, hunt their dogs against each other. Top prize being, of course, a brand new Polaris 570 four-wheeler. Um, you're going to hear some things on here that you may not uh, be familiar with. You're going to hear kids strike and tree their dog and, and stuff like that. And we're we're going to have a video here later on explaining all the terminology behind uh, coon hunting and competition coon hunting. And so, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. Um, we're taking the mini camper down there and... Uh, you know, just just having fun. Uh, it's good to have fun with the kids, and hound sports have and will always be, hopefully, an integral part of outdoor activities, especially for kids. Uh, it's so good for them. It's so much fun. Uh, we love our dogs. We love traveling with our dogs, and we love competing with our dogs. And uh, you're going to see a lot of that here on Kane Stream Media, uh, as well as other dog sports. So. This will maybe be an introduction to uh, competition coon hunting, especially on the youth side, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Josh Michaelis here with Kane Stream Media, and we are once again on the road, or well, getting ready to be on the road. Uh, we're headed down to the Tennessee Youth Showdown, Youth Handler Showdown. Uh, Jace will be hunting with a four-wheeler, getting ready to go pick him up from school. He gets to leave a little early, so he's all excited. But yeah, it's going to be, as you can see, it's pretty decent out today. But it is not pleasant here in North Missouri. So we're headed down to Tennessee. We're going to stop on the way. Uh, we're pulling the camper, the outbound extreme there. Um, I've got the truck fairly loaded up traffic today I got the truck fairly loaded up I uh, got to get uh, the dogs loaded a few other bits of pieces of odds and ends but yeah this show is gonna be a little bit of hunting a little bit of dog stuff a little bit of traveling with dogs and how I do it and a little bit of tiny camper living I guess so it is the maiden voyage for the outbound extreme uh, for being very far from home. We took it out a couple times within an hour or two of the house just to test everything out. So, yeah, should be fun. We'll get some footage for you. Um, ought to be a good time. Stay tuned. Taking down this dry wash and cutting to the left. Oh. Yep. Take them. Over here. Send him up there. Okay. We'll butter in another piece of puppet ground. How do you think this is gonna turn out? I hope it's better than last time. <laughs> Me too.
contrary. Come on. A little steep in here, ain't it? A little. <laughs> Not very far. Not far. Up here on this pretty oak ridge. Up here on this pretty oak ridge. Danger. Big old man. It's a big den tree, bud. Big den tree. Beautiful spot though. It's just a long ways up here. What the heck, baby? Come on, Death. Come on. Death. Death. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. You got good news, son. What? It's all downhill on the way back to camp. Thank God. You want to cut him loose again up here? No. <laughs> See, uh, cut the coffee boiling. Uh, we got back to camp after just one tree gone. Uh, did a good job, had a den tree, but uh, made it back to camp. And as you can see, I used the black rifle instant with the knockoff jet boil. And uh, that's the best way to make coffee when you're traveling small and light. Uh, you'll see here as I get the dogs out the next morning from camp that I'm using a dogs are treed tie out system. Um, it's really handy. You can either drive stakes in the ground or you can just put it up between two trees right there. Uh, you put the dogs on the leash. Uh, you walk over to the tie out, snap it on the tie out. Done deal. Easy peasy. Uh, Kevin and Nancy Hall make a fantastic product there that a lot of people use. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty handy to have on the road. Uh, you'll see I got Tazel there. She's still injured, uh, from a hunt a while back. And I've got her along so I can give her her antibiotics and all that stuff. She has cut up a little bit on her belly. Uh, these dogs, these dogs, uh, there's some dangers uh, when you free cast these hard going hounds at night. But Con, as you can see, has a pretty good handle. So I just let him run around a little bit and then I will get him put out on the tie out as well. So yeah, um, Hazel loves it. See her wagging her tail there. 
I just give Con a holler and go get him tied up, and dogs are set for the day. Weather's beautiful. Let them sit out, get a little sun. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is Thursday morning. We are here at camp, and we are just getting everything packed up. Had a pretty good hunt last night. Jace is competing with him down at the Youth Handler Showdown, so we did not want to turn him loose a lot. There's not much training you can do on an eight-year-old dog. Two days before the hunt starts. Come here. Yeah, you see Jace tying him up there. We use a, a tie-out system from Dogs Are Tree. Now, Colin, normally you don't have to tie him out. He can just run around. He's got a really good handle on him and stuff. But uh, with Hazel here, and she's the same way normally. Uh, we don't have to have a leash for her very often either. But she's just coming off a lot of stitches. Um, she got caught up. She got caught up the other night hunting. And uh, she's doing real well. She acts good. She can almost just about go. Jace doesn't want to hunt her though. He's worried about her getting hurt even worse, which I have a good idea. That's the dog he usually competes with. But uh yeah, she got she got caught up cut up pretty good. Uh 40 some stitches, I think. I assume going through a fence. And so that's the dog normally we would hunt in a situation like this, but it is what it is. They get injured. Um it could be dangerous out there. But yeah, just take you guys through a quick camp setup. Uh, I do run a generator. I'm trying to get away from it. This is our first long trip with the camper. So we ran the generator and the electric heater all night. You stay pretty warm last night, Beth? Yeah. Wasn't bad? No, it wasn't too bad. All right. But so far, so good. We like the trailer. We've still got a lot of tweaking to do on it. It is a brand new 2023 Outbound Extreme model. As you can see, look at those that are at outboundtrader.com. We've still got a lot to learn with it and a lot to do with it. But for what we do, or what I do especially, traveling with dogs, and some of the areas that I get to, this is pretty nice. Uh, I do have Wi-Fi. Uh, we just laid down and watched TV last night. Um, I do have a little portable power unit right there for when I'm on... I'm not on the generator or something like that, but it's not quite big enough, so we're looking into one of those. Uh, the cubby up here just holds our bedding, stuff like that. We put a couple interior lights in it that just switch on. And I mounted the TV myself. I just went and bought one from Walmart, drilled holes in the legs and tapped them into that instead of putting the whole wall mount on and stuff. Uh, those are mounted to the wall too, but I think I'm going to move them down to the bottom and use something else up there. Uh, you see a CO2 monitor right there. And oh, one thing I was, it was pretty high this morning. And we did leave a window open last night, but it was still in the, in the 4,000 range, which you can see right now with nobody in here and the windows all open and everything. It's a 550, which is about the same as outdoors right now. So I don't know, we're gonna have to look into that it's difficult in the winter because it is i mean it was high 30s this morning and we were just running a little bitty electric space heater and so we're gonna have to figure out a way to get more ventilation and more heat now i do have a diesel heater at home and that's from what i've been reading that's what everybody's suggesting um dry heat pump it in but i have not had time to mount it and do it correctly uh, we've been busy on the road filming hunts, uh, doing everything for Cane Stream Media, and still hunting as much as we can. And so, yeah. It's a work in progress, but so far so good. This is just a one night camp. We've come here, we hunted, we're halfway down to Tennessee. Uh, the conservation areas in Missouri are fantastic. We had one truck go by this morning, a deer hunter I assume. But look at the scenery. Not a soul around. 
free to park, free to camp. You're not going to have all your fancy hookups and stuff like that. But we don't need that stuff, do we, Bill? No, the porta potty leaves something to be desired. Yeah, though. there is a porta potty up there, but it's it was pretty rank. Now we do have a shower tent, and what I do is I just put the shower tent right by the door, right in here. If we were somewhere else where we we're going to stay for a few days, um, I use which I've only got to use it a couple times. It's pretty cool. I'll show it to you real quick. The geyser system. That is it, right there. And you got hot water, you can take about a 10 minute shower uh, per fill up. And so far so good. Are there better ways? Yes. But I'm also trying to do this as minimalist as possible because I've got to pack stuff for her, stuff for him, stuff for him when he's with me. And we don't have room for a lot of stuff. And we still have to have a very small trailer that we can get in and out of places like this. So, that was night one. First camp, we made one drop last night, which you guys seen. Uh, Con floated in there, done a good job on a den. I know he had the coon, because when he doesn't have a coon, he'd greet me off the tree like crazy. So anybody that draws Con in the future, um, if he's coming back and forth off that tree on my way in, not, never enough to draw minus. Um, yeah, he ain't got nothing. And he may not have had nothing last night. But he thought he did. That's all that matters. But yeah, beautiful day. We will head down to Lexington, Tennessee. What do you think, Hazel, baby? What do you think, girl? You don't see your stitches? Yeah, she does smile. Oh, he's smiling. Let's see your stitches. I don't know if you guys can see this very good. Uh, yeah, there is the first cut, and the bad one is back here. And she did just come off a litter of pups. And she was hit her bag was hanging just a little low. She wasn't dry enough yet. But we were trying to get her ready for this hunt. And she got cut up. Cut up all the way down through there on both sides credit to dr hines at unionville vet he done a fantastic job coming in there late at night and getting her sewed up for me uh no infection she's been on antibiotics and stuff but she just run a course through them so i'd say she's good to hunt but the little man over here says otherwise and it's his dog so he makes the call but yeah that's it that's camp set up we're gonna get back on the road and we are headed to Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived in Lexington, Lexington, Tennessee. We've got camp set up last night. Uh, didn't take no video last night because it was raining a lot. And I found some holes in our camping game. <laughs> but overall, it went pretty well. But yeah, we're at the hunt. You can see some folks have already arrived, got their dogs tied out. Uh, Sandra from K Lights is in there getting everything set up. Um, you can also see. We left our boots in the back of the truck last night. Luckily, we left them up, up upside down. The chaps, the chaps are wet, so they're out drying out. We're hoping the sun comes out in a little bit, and give us a, a little bit of drying action. But I was going to go through the camper setup and how we shower and all that stuff. The outbound last night did fantastic in the rain, by the way. Uh, we stayed high and dry and nice and warm. And in fact, I think. Jason's in here watching TV now. 
But yeah, it did pretty well. Slept pretty good last night, didn't we, both? Yeah. But yeah, it, uh, the outbound did good. Uh, the shower tent did not. What I did is I ordered an insulated ice fishing tent. Just a pop-up deal. That way we could keep our clothes in, shower, and all that stuff. Then I got to thinking, why would something you use to ice fish be really waterproof? And so we did get our showers taken last night before the rain done. The geyser worked really well. Good hot water. Stand on that mat. Take a shower. All your clothes are in here. It's got a little heater there in the corner. Keep everything nice and toasty. But as the night went on and the rain got harder, as you can see, a lot of our clothes got pretty wet. But other than that, everything was a success. we got a good place to tie the dogs up. We're right here at the clubhouse to where we don't have to drive when we get done hunting. When we get done hunting, and we pull in here, we uh, go take a hot shower, climb in bed, done deal. So yeah, it's sort of a success. We're going to have to work on the shower shower deal. Of course, we are on shore power here. We've got we've got ourselves plugged in. And so we're not having to run the generator, which is good. And we got everything pulled out, lights charging, all that good stuff. I just got them charging off the battery pack because that was easier. But yeah, we're going to have to uh, adjust our thinking on our shower tent. Which that is easy to pop up, easy to set out. It's got the good stakes that you can drive in and pretty much anything and hold. But not, not as waterproof as I would have hoped. <laughs> but yeah, we got a lot more coming up. Uh, we'll get some of these kids on camera. We'll get... Uh, what it's like to be at the coon hunt because i know a lot of people watching this are not going to be familiar with what we're doing here but uh one thing i did want to show you guys is what these kids are hunting for uh, now hunting with hounds has become a very lucrative lucrative deal sometimes um, these guys hunt for hundreds of thousands of dollars at some events um, brand new pickup trucks uh, you know, a $30,000 purse is no big deal now. There's one of those almost every weekend. And so a lot of people doing it for a living. And these kids, maybe these kids are kind of hoping that they get to that point. But we'll see. Walk in here. You guys see Sanders' crew hard at it. Getting everything set up for K-Lights. Down here hawking wares. Always great. Especially at a youth event. Say hi, Sandra. Hi. <laughs> we'll walk over here and show now you what these. The kids yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, get the kids get get them to work. I like it. But here is what they're hunting for. Brand new sportsman. They're a sportsman all-wheel drive 570. Pretty cool. If one of these kids are gonna get this trailer to haul it in. The other four-wheeler, it will be raffled off. There are 100 tickets sold on it. Um, I'm saying our best chance to win a four-wheeler is probably the raffle. Because <laughs> our dog, after Hazel got cut up, our dog is definitely not ready. Uh, Tom's a good coon dog, but we have not prepared him for this. So yeah. Pretty neat prize package. Very nice building. Well done event. And uh, we'll get some more for you here before long. Thanks.